Okay, so yes, Paul um, introduced much of this work already. It's something I did as part of my PhD um, in the Department of Geography. And I'm very much concerned with um, how surnames can demonstrate um, kind of their utility as a form of quantitative geographic data, but also how they indicate continuity and change within a population. So the, the basic idea is areas with relatively stable surname um, proportion, so people who have similar names um, tend to have more static populations than those that are all mixed up with many different names, like in central London. And this is very much, this very much, the idea very much feeds into the sorts of um, geodemographic work we're doing as a form of sort of cultural anchor, if you will, for the more general or, or, or um, more specific classifications um, in the virtual uh, identity domain. So this builds on, this map here uh, is uh, using the same data as Paul used for the, um, I'll just switch the lights off quickly, as Paul used for the terrible pink map that um, I produced uh, uh, showing the different surname regions. And basically, the more different the colours, the more different the surnames in each area. And we can actually see here a gradual transition across, the, across England from Cornwall to northern England as, as surnames gradually change. But then, of course, perhaps unsurprisingly, um, you end up with the more abrupt changes at the Scottish and, and Welsh borders. The different, slightly darker blotches are, are, represent urban areas, which, of course, are characterised by very mixed up surnames. Um, specifically from migrant groups. And again, this is a very interesting way of exploring the similarities, uh, spe uh, especially cultural similarities, between different populations. You know, and you can make comparisons between rural versus urban areas, for example, and within urban areas, how the surnames transition. Now, using this work as a basis, we've stretched it out and expanded to different countries. So for example, um, we've looked at Japanese naming conventions and. Uh, Again, you get a very similar idea. The, these represent different cluster outcomes, um, splitting Japan into two clusters through to ten clusters here um, in, in figure D. And what it shows is that um, these patterns closely reflect historical cultural um, patterns that existed you know, generations and generations ago and closely reflect things like physical geography. So the idea is if physical geography is influencing population groupings and population groupings are influencing virtual identities, then we can begin to draw these patterns together. Um, another interesting example here, again, is a similar clustering map, um, I think, into something like 20 or 30 clusters now. Um, and we're looking here at the Czech Republic. And this is an example I've really enjoyed working on because it actually shows the impact of large-scale population um, movements on the underlying surname distribution. Coming from the UK, we're not, we can't really conceive of the um, huge forced migrations that took place um, during and post the Second World War, for example, whereas um, in the Czech Republic, especially around the fringes, there were millions and millions and millions of displaced people shifted from Germany into the Czech Republic and then back out again at the end of the war. And it begins to come up with some really interesting, you can draw some very interesting conclusions about the areas that were most affected by these population movements and those least affected. And Again, taking it out to a more general scale, again, we can begin to explore the surnaming patterns across Europe. And of course, this is a very aggregate map, and it perhaps isn't surprising that they follow linguistic boundaries. But you can see how, for example, um, you, know, you get the kind of mixed French-German speaking areas here of Switzerland and right through to the Alsace-Lorraine uh, on the, on the French-German um, border. And again, these patterns um, actually closely reflect other online distributions. I don't know if any of you have seen the Twitter language maps of um, produced by a guy called Eric Fisher. The patterns in terms of the languages people are speaking on Twitter almost identically uh, reflect these surname maps. So that's me done. Um, hopefully it's just a general uh, introduction as to what the sorts of things um, I've been working on as part of my PhD. Um, and there's a lot more of this stuff in terms of uh, the methods I've used and so on. Uh, feel free to contact me if you're interested. Thank you.